praise the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Grace, peace, and mercy to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered worldwide and the strangers that's with us. Happy Sabbath. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, Brother Arthur. What's going on, Ryan Morales? Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm uh, sitting on my couch, Arthur. It's too cold this morning, man. So today, praise the Lord, man. Today, we're going to discuss uh, the children of Israel. Um, but I'm going to do it a bit unorthodox. So... I'm not, uh, I'm not, I didn't put together a lesson as far as putting together scriptures and, and I'm going to read to you this morning. Um, I wanted to have more of an open discussion, um, so that we all can discuss it together and all be edified, feeding off of one another. So we're going to do what the Bible says. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.21, uh, the book says, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. So that's what we're going to do this morning. Uh, we do that every Sabbath, but pertaining to this this touchy subject, we're going to we're going to find out who are the true the true children of Israel. And, you know, whether or not it's true that all nations can be saved um, because you have a lot of false doctrines going around where people are deceiving folks because they've been deceived to believe that God is only interested in saving the children of Israel and nobody else. And that's a lie, but we're going to prove it in the Bible. Um, so, I thank everybody that's joined thus far. I pray that you, um, you know, if, if if the Lord have put it on your heart, I pray that you endure this conversation. Let's talk about this open discussion. I'll be reading the comments, you know, um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll just feed off each other until we prove this thing. It's already been proven, but I'm just I just want to do that today. Um, for those that may not know already, um, I I want to make an open apology to anybody who's come in contact with some of my brothers um, who walk after the flesh and not after the spirit of God. Um, if you are familiar with the the so-called uh, Israelite camps, you know where they preach hate, you know at people and. They wear their Power Ranger costumes and they stand on the street corners. I sincerely apologize on behalf of my brothers. You know, um, they are my flesh and blood brothers. Um, they do not know Christ. They don't know Jesus. And that's why they do what they do. But um, just because they preach hate at people and, you know, they, they are all out of order. The one part that they have right is who we are as a nation. Um, but I understand why it may be hard for some people to not believe that because the, their approach throws, throws you off and it doesn't make you, you know, and in, even interested, you know, to believe that, but it's true. The true children of Israel, according to the Bible, it's not about race. It's not about God is not prejudiced. God is not, you know. But at the same time, God is not colorblind either, as people try to make him seem. You know, there's beauty in every nationality on earth. You understand? It's not, you know, it's not one group of people is superior to the next based on skin color. That's not what it's about. You understand? But, um, <clears throat> it's... 
it's one group of people is superior to everyone else because of the covenant. But at the same time, God have used that in order to draw all the other peoples to himself through this one group of people that he made the covenant with. Um, so let's look at uh, Genesis 10. Um, I'll just start it off and hopefully more people will join if the Lord will. Um, Genesis 10. So we're going to read. Um, we're going to read a little bit of it. And then we're going to skip over to uh, chapter 11. Uh, good morning, Peter Timms, uh, Deborah, Israel, Hezekiah. Um, good morning, Tina. Um, we in Genesis 10. Um, praise the Lord, Sister Ali. Um, please have your King James Bibles, brothers and sisters. And also, sisters, please cover your heads. Brothers, please uncover your heads. 1 Corinthians 11, 2 through 16 is your reference before we begin reading. Um, and like I said, this is not going to be a lesson like how I normally do on the Sabbath. This is going to be an open discussion um, where we all chime in. Uh, so if you're on the comment section and you're watching this video, feel free to comment. Um, whether it's anything positive or negative, comment and we'll, we can discuss it. Um, I'll, try to, I'll try to reason um, with everybody. Praise the Lord. Uh, I don't know how to say your first name. Israel. Mr. Harris, good morning. Um, we're in Genesis 10. Um, and we're going to get started. So we're going to look at the sons of Japheth first, the eldest son of Noah. This is after the flood. Um, verse 2, Genesis 10 and verse 2. It says the sons of Japheth, Gomer and Magog. So we know uh, Magog is dealing with Europe. These are European nations. If I'm not mistaken, Magog is is somewhat related to uh, Russia, if I'm not mistaken. Now, those of you that's in the comment section, if you understand, if you know these things, please put it in the comment section so we all can be edified. Um, this morning, like I said, we're op doing an open discussion, but we are simply going to break down, according to the Bible, who are the true children of Israel. It's not about flesh. It's not about glory in the flesh. It's about the truth. The truth shall set you free. Do not be deceived. Salvation is of the Jews, the Bible says. So you would have to know who the real Jews are in order to understand and be taught salvation. Okay. Um, okay, so the sons of Japheth, Gomer and Magog and Madai and Javan and Tubal and Meshech and Tiras and the sons of Gomer, these are still J uh, Japhethites. The sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz. So I have a question. Didn't they do some type of DNA research some years back, if, unless I'm mistaken, on the people that inhabit the land of Jerusalem today? And didn't they find out that majority of these people have Ashkenazi blood? So, or not majority, but a good, a good chunk of those people have Ashkenazi blood? Well, that's because they are Gentiles. But Ashkenaz, if you look it up, and I know this for a fact, Ashkenaz is the Germans, the German people, Germany. Gentiles. Okay? And Rephath and Togomar and the sons of Jaban, Elisha and Tarshish, Kittim and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families and their nations. Gentiles. I told you before in the lesson, and I told you just in written format, the reason why the Edomites who live in our land uh, right now, and they pretty much are running the Gentiles 
uh, system, financially speaking, the reason that they look like Gentiles is because they interbred with the Ashkenaz people before they came back and took our land. This is recorded history, so it's not, I'm not making this stuff up. Good morning, Brother Colbert. Praise the Lord. Happy Sabbath. Um, so let's look at the sons of Ham. Now, we looked at the sons of Japheth, right? Japheth is the father of the European nations, but Japheth himself was melanated. That is a fact. Everybody on earth up until a little while after the flood with the sons of Japheth, good morning, uh, John Israel, was melanated. It wasn't until Japheth's descendants started, you know, uh, repopulating you know, multiplying the region where they live in this dome, they live closer to the center of the circle of the earth. So it's colder because the sun, the sunspot is not beaming down on them in these European nations. So it's a little bit colder. So their pigmentation would naturally change after you talk a millennia. Okay. And plus because of what they was eating, you know, hair texture change and all that. But they, their father, Japheth, was a melanated boy, okay, man. We all come from one of the three sons of Noah. So we just proven, we're going all the way back to the beginning, we just proven it. Let's look at the sons of Ham because, praise the Lord, because there's, there's been false doctrine for a long time since the Gentiles, you know, uh, took the word of God and, made it seem like God has given them this word and that they are the, somehow the New Testament church and all this. That's baloney. The Gentiles have been teaching the world for a long time that the so-called Negroes are Ham's descendants. So we're going to prove that, whether or not it's true or not, because I'm sure there's some people that believe that to this day, that when Ham committed sin with his uh, mother that when Noah woke up and cursed his grandson that the curse was black skin that is false but we're going to prove it the sons of Ham verse 6 Cush and Mitzrayim Mitzrayim is Egypt Egypt if you look up the word means black and put and Canaan Canaan is the same group of Hamites black people that uh, the Lord took their land from them and gave it to the children of Israel, who are also a black people. But all black people are not the children of Israel. It's only one group of black people, just like there's many different nations of so-called white people. If you call an Italian man a Mexican, he'd get mad at you. If you called a German man um, uh, a Brit, he would get upset. Because even though they all Gentiles, they're not all the same. You understand? Just like, you know, Negroes are not the same as the so-called Africans, the Hamites, even though we're all black. OK, let's keep going. And the sons of Cush, Seba and Havilah and Sapta and Rama and Saptecha and the sons of Rama, Sheba and Dedan. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister uh, Cynthia, for sharing the video. Anybody else, uh, feel free to share the video um, to get more people involved in the conversation. It's an open dialogue, brothers and sisters. This is not me um, doing my, my regular teaching um, today. I just wasn't up to teaching this morning. I just want to have an open discussion about the, who the true children of Israel are. Um, so I didn't write any scriptures out. Um, but... Uh, and verse 8, and Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore, it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And we know Nimrod was the leader behind building the Tower of Babel, right? When the earth spoke one language during his day. Um, let's skip down to verse uh, 13. And Mitzrayim, or Egypt, begat Ludium and An Anaman. And Le, uh, Lahabim 
and Nephutim and Pethrasim and Kasulim, out of whom came Philistim and Kaphtorim. And Canaan begat Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Girgashite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, and the Arvidite, and the Zemurite, and the uh, Hamathathite, and afterward were the families of the Canaanites spread abroad. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou comest to Gerar, unto Gaza, as thou goest unto Sodom, and Gomorrah, and Adma and Zebulun, even unto Lash, Lasha. These are the sons of Ham after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. Praise the Lord, uh, Ben Israel. Happy Sabbath. So I want to share something. Now, I don't have the book in front of me. I have the Holy Scriptures in front of me, but I don't have this book that I'm about to reference in front of me, but I do know what's written in it a little bit. The Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. And some of you may be familiar with that. In that book, it tells you that Ham was the youngest of Noah's three sons, probably born 96 years before the flood. He was the father of the dark races, all the dark races on earth, but not the Negroes. Not the Negroes. I wonder why that is. I wonder why. Verse 21, Genesis 10 and verse 21. Unto Shem also the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth the elder, even to him were children born. The children of Shem, Elam and Ashur and Arphaxad. Now Arphaxad is the one that we're going to pay close attention to. And Lud and Aram, and the children of Aram, Uz and Hul and Gether and Mash. And Arphaxad begat Salah, and Salah begat Eber. And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided. And his brother's name was Joktan. And Joktan begat Amaladad and uh, Shelf. <laughs> Shalef, Shalef, and Hazar Maveth, and Jarrah, and Hadaram, and Uzal, and uh, Dikla, and Obal, and Abimelel, and Sheba, and Ophir, and Havilah, and Job, Jobab. All these were the sons of Jokden. And their dwelling was from Misha, as thou goest unto Sephar, a mount of the east. These are the sons of Shem after their families, after their tongues and their lands, after their nations. OK, now let's skip over. Good morning, uh, Sister Michelle Butler. Praise the Lord. Happy Sabbath. Um, we have an open discussion. Feel free to share the video. Um, open discussion about who are the true children of Israel. Most of us who know that we Israel, we our eyes have already been opened. The Lord praise the Lord for that. He, he have opened our, our understanding. We know who we really are according to the Bible now. But I'm doing this open discussion for those who do not know who the real children of Israel are. They've been duped by Roman Christianity and they believe that it doesn't matter. Um, but we're, we're, our job as the priest of God is to teach the other nations, thus saith the Lord, and not let them be deceived if we can help it. Some people are going to go into more deception. That's their choice. But our job is to try to help as many as we can because we should have the same heart as our Father in heaven, which is not to see anyone perish, but everyone come to repentance. And I would dare say that if you don't know who the real children of Israel are, well, how, how could you be taught about salvation? When Jesus told the Samaritan woman at the well, who was a stranger, but she thought that she was an Israelite, he told her salvation is of the Jews. So if salvation is of the Jews, then that would behoove anybody, whether you Jew or stranger, to find out the truth so that you could learn about salvation. Because if you don't know the truth about salvation and you don't know that you got to believe in Jesus for the remission of your, all your past sins, get baptized in his holy name and keep his law, statutes and commandments, and you don't do that, but you just believe in Jesus. I, I would dare say that you ain't going to make it into the kingdom. You know, 
And the Lord is not unfaithful that he will not send you witnesses. The Lord going to surely send you people that going to be telling you, look, the, the so-called Negroes are the real Jews, man, of the Bible. Now, don't just listen to any one of them, because then you're going to get messed up like Dana. Dana Stevens off YouTube, you know, calling them Yah and, you know, black brothers and sisters and all this. Look, listen to some righteous Hebrews, okay? And we are out here. Um... Genesis 11 and verse 10. Or actually, we let's start at... Mm, let's see. We'll start at 10. We'll start at 10. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begat Arphaxad two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he begat Arphaxad 500 years and begat sons and daughters. And our facts had lived five and thirty years and begat Salah. And our facts had lived after he begat Salah four hundred and three years and begat sons and daughters. And Salah lived thirty years and begat Eber. And Salah lived after he begat Eber four hundred and three years and he begat sons and daughters. And Eber lived four hundred and thirty years and begat Peleg. And Eber lived after he begat Peleg 430 years and begat sons and daughters. And Peleg lived 30 years and begat Ru. Ru. And Peleg lived after he begat Ru 209 years and begat sons and daughters. And Ru lived 2 and 30 years and begat Sarug. And Ru lived after he begat Sarug 207 years and begat sons and daughters. And Sarug lived 30 years and begat Naor. And Sarug lived after he begat Naor 200 years and begat sons and daughters. And Naor lived 9 and 20 years and begat Terah. And Nahor lived after he begat Terah 119 years and begat sons and daughters. And Terah lived 70 years and begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran began Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of uh, his nativity in the Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Naor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarah and the name of Naor's wife Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah and the father of Iscab. Uh, Sarah was barren. OK, now we're going to stop right there. Now, why did Genesis 11, 10 through 32 run down Shem's bloodline and the first one we encounter and we start reading about where the Lord made a covenant with this man Abram is because Abraham Abram Abraham was a Shemite that's important because the Most High is showing you from which of the three sons of Noah he made his covenant with you understand he didn't make it he didn't make his covenant with the Gentiles, the sons and daughters of Japheth. He didn't make his covenant with the Hamites. You understand? The so-called African peoples. He made it with Shem, with Shem's descendants, but not all of Shem's descendants. He only made it with one group from Shem's descendants. So he ran down our Faxad's bloodline all the way till you get to Abram. And we know Abram, his name was changed from Abram to Abraham, the father of many nations. The father of faith. You understand? Now, let's look at, um, let's look at chapter 15, Genesis 15. And... Uh, because we're going to see this covenant. We're going to run this covenant down briefly. Okay. Now, Abram had a dream. You understand? In, verse, in chapter 15, he had a dream. Now, let's look at chapter, I mean, verse 13. He had a dream, and now God's talking to him. Jehovah. You're probably saying, Jehovah? That doesn't sound right. Look, Jehovah is the one who came in the flesh in his father's name. The father's name is Jesus. The son of God's name, his real name is Jehovah, according to the book. But his name is also many other things. Israel, Emmanuel, the word of God. Okay, but this is Jehovah dealing with Abram. We've never dealt with the father. We've only been dealing with the son of God. 
I just have to say that until people understand. Because at one point I didn't understand neither. Okay. Uh, verse 13. And un and he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed, what's, what's a man's seed? His descendants. Right? His children. Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Now this is not talking about America, brothers and sisters. And the four corners of the earth that Israel have been scattered to. This is talking about Egypt. Mitzrayim. We can prove that. Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge and afterward shall they come out with great substance. Let's skip down to verse 16. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. So that's why the Lord allowed us to stay in Egypt slavery. And I do mean us, us Negroes, us black folk. When you go to Egypt and you look at them hieroglyphs, it shows you Negroes on them hieroglyphs in slavery. You understand? But when it comes to how do we know that this is talking about the Negroes, the so-called African-Americans. And we're not just in America, might I add. We're in South America, Australia, Japan, China, parts of Africa, parts of Europe. The nation of Israel have been scattered to the four corners of the earth, like the Bible says. And we're going to find out before this, let this discussion is over, how were they transported to all these places over the, over the face of the earth? Because it's not like God plucked them up with his hand, literally, and, phys and had angels take us to these lands. Something monumental happened, and the whole world knows about it. But the whole world remain wants to remain in darkness, as far as understanding goes, to admit how this black people was transported all over the world because it's in the bible okay now the lord told abram abraham he told abram that the nation i mean his seed was going to be in slavery right 400 years and then they was going to come out that's not talking about right now because um if you if you don't um what am i trying to say um we've been We've been in this Gentile captivity for a little bit over uh, 400 years, technically speaking, because the Arabs, the Ishmaelites, they was they had us in slavery first. And then the, the Gentiles made a deal with the Hamites and the Hamites sold Israel into the Gentiles hands. And. Um. Uh, you know, that that goes back to like the 14th and 15th century, if I'm not mistaken. If anybody knows anything different, feel free to post. Um, but the, you know, this 400 years, it's been, like I said, it's been over 400 years we've been in this Gentile captivity, you know, to the Americas and the four corners of the earth. But the prophecy that was given to Abram about the children of Israel being in slavery 400 years, that was talking about Egypt. That's not talking about right now. 2019 is upon us. It's not here yet. At, on Passover or before Passover, 14 days before Passover, at the beginning of the month, Abib, which is coming around very quickly. That's when it will become the new year. It will be 2019. But at the same time, that still doesn't mean that we about to go home. Not yet. The Lord said we got to go through Jacob's trouble. Which is three and a half years of, you know, almost annihilation to our people. Except for a remnant. Um, 
let's go to Exodus 19. And let's look at what the Lord said about Abraham's seed. Okay. Exodus 19. Um, let's look at verse 3. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. Because if you know the story, good morning, uh, Damon. Um, if you know the, the story, Abram had Isaac, who the Lord passed the covenant through, even the, circum the circumcision. That was part of the covenant. Um, and is part of the covenant. Um, Isaac had two boys, Jacob and Esau. God said before they were even out of the womb that he loved Jacob and hated Esau. Okay. Now Esau is still on the earth. So God don't hate him in the sense that he's going to be annihilated. It's just God is saying that he hates his evil deeds, his evil works. Because if you know the history of the Edomites, you understand they did some very treacherous and evil, wicked things, even unto us, unto the seed of Jacob, over history. Okay, but nevertheless, God passed the covenant from Isaac to Jacob. Jacob then went on to have 12 sons and one daughter. Of course, you are not what your mother is. You are what your father is. Um, so the 12 sons, uh, became known as the 12 tribes of Israel because God changed Jacob's name from Jacob to Israel. So 12 sons, they go into Egypt and right before uh, Jacob dies, they all go down there because it was a great famine. Joseph's already down there. 400 years past Israel, the children of Israel had multiplied into this mighty nation while they was in Egypt. Then the Lord brings them out, right? Destroys the, the Hamites because they had them in hard bondage, brought them out. Now the children of Israel are at Mount Sinai, right? And there's a, it's a mixed multitude. So there's some Hamites that came out with them for fear of the Lord. Okay. Now verse four, ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Okay, then God proceeds to give the children of Israel his covenant, right? The royal law. You understand? And then later on in Leviticus, he gives uh, the sacrificial law because it was necessary. The schoolmaster was necessary because it was the school, the schoolmaster. It was to teach Israel and later on those who it would be explained to that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Passover lamb, the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world before the foundation of the earth. So God gives those, gives those two things to the children of Israel and then Israel sins. My ancestors sinned against the Lord, right? Worshiping a golden calf that they had Aaron to build. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> and um, good morning to everybody just joining. Happy Sabbath. Um, so like I said, then Israel sinned and they worshiped that golden calf, right? And when they worshiped the golden calf, they broke the first, if I'm not mistaken, the first and the second commandment. No other gods and no graven images, right? And they did both at the same time. So the Lord was about to kill them. Moses interceded on behalf of Israel God spared us if it was not for Moses interceding God would have killed every last one of our ancestors and started over with Moses you understand 
So, long story short, um, later on, uh, the Lord had um, sent the children of Israel, like he's leading them to the promised land, right? The land of the Canaanites. Because remember he told Abram uh, the reason Israel going to be, he didn't say the reason Israel, but I'm saying that. The Lord is saying to Abram, your seed going to be um, in captivity for 400 years. I, I told you, that's not talking about now. That was talking about in Egypt. Um, because they left 430 years on the nose. Nevertheless, the reason that they was going to be there for, for those 400 years is because the sins of the Amorites. Remember we read in Genesis 10, the Amorites are Hamites, so-called African people, okay? And uh, the Lord told Abram, the sins of the Amorites are not yet filled. Their cup is not full yet. So it took four generations for their sin cup to get filled. And then on that day, that's when the Lord delivered the Amorites up. That's when he led Israel out of Egypt at the same time to give us their land, the land of the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Jebusites, the Hivites. You understand? You understand the uh, Perizzites. Okay. And once we're going to the land, the Lord is, you know, leading us uh, by Gabriel, his holy angel, his holy spirit. And, you know, we get close enough to the land to where Israel can see the land. The Lord commands that 12 uh, spies of Israel go out and search the land, you know, and then come back and bring the report to Moses and or uh yeah moses and joshua and them or joshua i'm sorry was with them I'm, I'm sorry i'm thinking of something else good morning uh natalie um praise the lord happy sabbath we're having an open discussion about the true children of israel most of us already know that we us negroes we know that we the israelites of this bible um but there's many people that do not know and so therefore I want to have an open discussion just in case anybody has their rebuttal. Those of us that are, are Christ's disciples, we can lead them in understanding the truth because the truth will make us free. So, like I said, um, you know, we we had the 12 Israelites go over, spy the land out. They came back. Joshua and Caleb was among the 12. They come back. All but Joshua and Caleb gave an evil, evil report. Because there was giants in the land. Now, I'm not going to get into the whole giants thing. I'm not going to get into it. But came back and gave the evil report. The Lord was displeased. He said, y'all going to get a year for every day that you was gone. Where you're going to wander in the wilderness. They was gone 40 days and 40 nights. So the Lord made them wander 40 years. A year for every day they was gone. So after the 40 years was over, the children of Israel... Moses is still alive, and we're now uh, going over, we're about to go into the promised land. But the Lord had told Moses that he wasn't going to go because the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron to hit the top of the rock at Horeb, which you can still see physically today. The rock is still split down the center. Beautiful sight. If you ever get the chance to look it up or actually go there physically and see it. So where the water gushed out. Because Israel was complaining they was thirsty. Uh, because they hit the rock and the Lord had told them to speak to the rock. Uh, the Lord told Moses that he was not going to go into the promised land. Now we know Moses will be part of the first resurrection. But Moses did not go to the promised land physically. Okay. So let's go to Deuteronomy 28. And we're going to read where Moses, given by commandment of the Most High... The Most High is telling Moses this, to tell to the children of Israel. To tell to the children of Israel. Okay? This chapter is important because these things that are said here only happen to one group of people on earth. And the whole world knows. That's, that's what's mind-boggling. 
is that the whole world knows that this stuff has happened to one group of people, but the world refuses to acknowledge that this same group of people are the priest of God, are his chosen people, are the people of the covenant. And we're going to read some scriptures where the, the nations, they love having us at the bottom. They love, you know, they love uh, the financial success that they have off the backs of us, the slaves, the true Jews, the children of Israel, the children of Jacob, the children of the Most High. Deuteronomy 28. And let's look at verse 15. We're not going to read the whole chapter. I'm just I'm going to skip, but I'm going to pull out some stuff and show you. And if, if you don't know already, then this is a good chance for you to know. You know, maybe you have been in the Bible for 20 and 30 years, but you probably never read Deuteronomy 28. And if you have, you read it with eyes closed. Well, here's your chance to read it with eyes open. Humble, humble yourself. To get an understanding it says but if it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the lord thy god how do you listen to god's voice you do what his word says this written bible everything that come out of god god's mouth is in this book everything that he wants us to know it come out of this book so that's how you obey god's voice you keep his commandments to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Good morning, uh, Nancy. Praise the Lord and happy Sabbath. So the Lord is telling Moses, tell the children of Israel, if they do everything I say, they keep all my law, statutes and commandments. I'm going to bless them. The blessing going to chase them. It don't matter where they go, what they do. They're going to be blessed, blessed, blessed. If they disobey me, on the other hand, I'm going to curse them. And the curses are going to chase them. No matter where they go, what they do, they're not going to succeed as a group, as a nation. They're going to fail. They're going to be at the bottom. You understand? These curses are going to tackle them down. Okay. Let's look at verse 16. It says, Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. So it don't matter if you live in a city. This group of people, it don't matter if they live in a city or if they live in a country. They're going to be cursed. The curses are a sign and a wonder. Because when you see this people, you're going to say, the sign is going to be on this people. You're going to say, man, it's something up with this people. You may not be able to put your finger on it at first, but if you know what the word of God says, you're going to understand. Let's let's skip down to verse um, 19. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Coming and going, this group of people going to be cursed. You see? Um, let's look at... Um, skip down to verse, um, 26, skip down to verse 26 and thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air and unto the beast of the earth and no man shall fray them away. Now, I'm not saying, brothers and sisters, that nobody else on earth have been hung on trees before. But nobody's been hung more than the children of Israel. Nobody. I'm just going to deal with America. But I know it's been happening all over the world. Because this is not limited to America. This is talking about everywhere that we was going to be captives at which is the four corners of the earth, all over the, this world. Wherever the children of Israel are, these things have happened to them and to us. The Lord said our body, that's what a carcass is, is a body, a dead body, would be meat, food, to all the birds of the air, the scavenger birds. You've seen the pictures, you've seen the videos, 
that they've showed you of people of color talking about the Negroes being hung on trees, dead, and the Gentiles, the sons and daughters of Japheth, standing around this dead body of this Hebrew, taking pictures, smiling. Now, why did this happen to this black people? Because the Lord told us in verse 15, it's going to happen to you. These curses are going to happen to you. All these terrible things are going to happen to you as a nation of people because you refuse to obey my commandments. The Lord said, no man going to free these, these animals away from eating on this dead body. Verse 27, the Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt and with the emeralds. Emeralds is hemorrhoids. And with the scab and with the itch whereof thou canst not be healed. So when you think about herpes, when you think about gonorrhea, syphilis, AIDS, these things afflict everybody on earth, but nobody more than this black people called Israel. Israel is at the top of the list when it comes to these sicknesses, these diseases, these cancers. We're at the top of the list. You know why? Because we are the children of this book. We are the people of this book. And furthermore, we have sinned against our God. And that's why God is allowing all this evil to come upon us. Let's keep reading. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. Because good morning, uh, Michelle Turner. Praise the Lord and happy Sabbath to everybody just joining. Why are the children of Israel mad? Because all this stuff that's happening to our people, we see it and we're like, why is there no justice? Why is there no peace? The Lord says there's no peace to the wicked. And if you're wicked, good morning, uh, Darrell. Praise the Lord and happy Sabbath. If you're if you are wicked, that just means that you're a sinner. There's no peace to the sinners because the Lord is is trying to save that that sinner's life. He's trying to convert them to his word, to his law. The law is perfect at converting the soul. So if the wicked refuse to humble themselves before the mighty hand of God and do thus save the Lord, believe in Jesus and keep his commandments. Evil going to keep on happening to him. So Israel is mad. At all the stuff that they see, they blind. The Lord said, in blindness and astonishment of heart. Why the blindness? Because we being burnt from every side. All these different nations on earth taking advantage of this, of this one group of people, this black people called the children of Israel. Good morning, Dorothy. Uh, praise the Lord and happy Sabbath. Good morning, Angelo Osborne. Praise the Lord, happy Sabbath. The blindness is because they all these other nations doing us in. But you have majority of our people because the only reason they remain blind, brothers and sisters, is because they refuse to humble themselves and try to understand God's word. They don't seek the counsel of the wise. Who know what the book says to give them the answer that they're really looking for. They, they want to stay in their sins because. Let's face the, the truth. People love sins. People, man in general, loves to sin against God, especially because God don't kill you the first or second time you sin. He's long suffering. He gives you a chance to get yourself together, to get yourself right. But people take advantage of God's kindness and God is not ignorant of this. He knows. That's why on Judgment Day, people are going to be pleading for their lives. Because they're not they're going to see that lake of fire and they're not going to want to go there, but it's going to be too late then. You got a chance now. Call on the name of the Lord while he may be found. So the children of Israel are, they, they, the Lord said, I'm going to hit you with madness, with blindness and astonishment of heart. The heart is the mind. So being astonished in the mind, just, it's just another way of saying this, this people, God's people are amazed at what they see going on to their people. 
29. We're in Deuteronomy 28 and 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. No, nobody's going to come and get you out of this situation. Nobody's going to be saying, man, it's really terrible what y'all doing to this black people, man. And even if they do stand up and, and try to defend this black people called Israel, they get put down real quick. Because the Lord said, no, no man going to save you. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for a man, a flesh and blood man to come save us. The majority of our people. Instead of looking to our God and our King, who is Jesus, the Christ. Second Chronicles 7, 14, sound familiar? Verse 30, thou shalt betroth the wife and another man shall lie with her. Didn't this happen during the so-called slave days? We still in captivity now. We just not living on the plantations and being whipped. But spiritually we still are. But didn't, don't they show you this in movies like Birth of a Nation, Roots, uh, 12 Years a Slave, all this type of stuff. They show you this in the movies. Well, now you're reading about it in God's word. The Lord said, you're going to have a wife and another man going to have sex with your wife. This not just talking about adultery, like the woman is willing. To, this is talking about rape. You think the Hebrew sisters wanted to have sex with the Gentile men? Of course not. Of course not. But the Lord said it was going to happen. Now, we know what happened to this black people, so who who are these black people then? If their history is recorded in this book, you know let's use some common sense. The Lord said, thou shalt build an house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. I just was showing my wife some stuff earlier today. Who do you think built the White House in this country? The so-called White House. It used to be called the president's house, but who who you think built it? Who built the infrastructure behind many of the great countries now in this in this day and age? Who you think works on the, the maintenance, the upkeeps of these buildings? You think it's the Gentiles who run the world right now? Or do you think it's the children of Israel who's at the bottom? Stop moving. The Lord said we was going to build a house and not live in it. Thou shalt plant a vineyard and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. When they had a, our ancestors, Israel, picking cotton, picking the sugar cane down in Cuba and Mexico and, and, you know, Puerto Rico. Do you think we was reaping the reward of, the, of that? Or do you think we was getting cut on our fingers and, you know, sweating and long work days? We didn't enjoy the, the, the reward of planting a vineyard and getting the, the crops back. We planted it and we didn't enjoy nothing from it. We picked their cotton for them. That's how they got rich. Why do you think the Gentiles are walking around with, all, with boatloads of money? I'm talking about their family's wealth. Why do you think that is? It's not because it just happened overnight, brothers and sisters, because a lot of them come from slave owning families. They own slaves. Who were the slaves? The children of Israel. Let's keep reading. Let's skip down to verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. So... Remember the movie Roots and Kunta Kinte and his wife was pleading with the slave master not to sell their daughter. And he did it anyway. And she went to another plantation. Do you not understand? The Lord said, and your eyes will look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Praise the Lord, uh, Bobby. Happy Sabbath. 
we have an open discussion about the children of Israel. We doing what the book say, First Thessalonians 5.21. So we proven who the true children of Israel are. It has been proven already for a long time. But nevertheless, a lot of people still don't know. So we we proven it for their sake. So the children of Israel, their children will be taken from them and given to another people. Jumping from plantation to plantation. Treated as livestock. We know this happened to the so-called Negroes. So, and nobody else. Nobody else have experienced all of this stuff simultaneously, but we have. That's what let us know, reading this, this ain't the only place in the book that testifies to who we really are. And we're going to see some other places, but all in all, so far we know, oh yeah, okay, yeah, all this did happen to the so-called black people. Yep. See, the pride of the nations is that they don't want to humble themselves and come to the slaves to ask the slaves about salvation because they believe that they are the priests now. Big lie. Let's skip down to verse um, 35. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. Y'all remember that movie Soul Food? Remember Big Mama? Remember she had a sickness that she couldn't be healed from? Remember when they used to have Sunday dinner? Eating all that unclean food. That's the children of Israel for you. We still doing it to this day. And that's why we still suffering to this day. Because we will not obey the voice of God. We will not keep his commandments as a nation. As an individual, if you've been keeping God's commandments, you love Jesus, you love the most high. You've been keeping his law, statutes and commandments. This is not talking about you. As far as being in error. Some of these curses still affect you, whether you're righteous or unrighteous. But as a nation, as a group of people, me and my people, all these curses pertain to us. And only us. Because even when the stranger becomes spiritual Israel, they do not come under none of these curses. They don't experience none of this. Only the true children of Israel experience all this stuff. What's going on, Yisrael? Praise the Lord and happy Sabbath, man. Let's, let's look at 36. We in Deuteronomy 28, 36. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee. Because as a nation, we like to have a leader. A flesh and blood leader. Our stupidness, to be honest. Because we are our, our leader, our king is in the heavens, man. Nevertheless, the Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation. Nation is short for nationality. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. I'm going to take you and your leader and I'm going to take you to another country where you've never been before. You nor your ancestors. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. I was just talking to my wife about this earlier today. Because I was showing her a video of, uh, I showed her plenty of videos, but I showed her this one where Malcolm X, this is in 65, um, seven days before he got shot by the Hebrews from Islam. And Malcolm X went on record to say that one of the reasons that he left Islam was because he found out Elijah Muhammad had made a deal um or so he he thinks he made a deal with uh the kkk and white supremacy so he it, uh, amidst a lot of other stuff that he said he mentioned that well when you consider the other gods that the Most High is talking about, he's not saying he wants us to worship other gods. He's prophesying. He's telling us, look, when you get to these lands, this is what you're going to do. 
many of y'all going to end up worshiping these false gods. Who's the god of wood? Roman Christianity. Why? Because they worship a, a, a wooden cross. God said no graven images. God said have no other gods before me. If your mother or your father was bludgeoned to death with a hammer, would you go get a diamond hammer as a necklace and wear it around your neck? And people ask you, well, why are you wearing that? Oh, it's so I can, you know, because I, I, I just want to represent my how my mother or my father died. That's stupid. The master came in the flesh and sacrificed himself to save us, to resurrect Israel spiritually and physically. Physically going to happen at his second coming. But the first time it was a spiritual resurrection. He was resurrected, not just for Israel, but for the whole world, but to Israel first, to the Jew first, and then the stranger. Where, did, where in that did Jesus say, now, it's okay that you wear a, a crucifix around your neck to remember me? Good morning, Brother James. Praise the Lord. Happy Sabbath. The most I didn't say that. But that's what lets you know, Israel in captivity, we are worshiping these false gods wood and stone roman christianity islam buddhism hinduism just to name a few our people are messed up 37 and thou shalt become an astonishment a proverb hide if you want to hide something from a black person put it in a book because they don't like to read proverb black people all black people like chicken and watermelon proverb all black men are thugs and gangsters. Proverb. All these black women, they, they love to twerk. Proverb. And a byword. What's a byword? That's a derogatory nickname. Nigger. Coon. Porch monkey. Monkey. Ape. Big lip African booty scratchers. By words. I'm not saying nobody else on earth is called by words, but nobody more than the children of Israel. We are at the top of the list. Most hated. Most likely to die. Sometimes for no reason at all. Among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Good morning, Leonard. Praise the Lord and happy Sabbath. Let's keep going. Um, let's skip down to 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Hmm. 43, skip down to 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. I mean, this is obvious. If we humble ourselves and just read the book and let the Bible speak, it's obvious. God says to his people, you're going to have sons and daughters, and you, but you're not going to enjoy them because they're going to go into captivity. Who experiences this more than the so-called black people? Which black, black people is, that's a byword too. Because black is a color or the absence thereof. Just like white, it, it could be considered a, a byword or yellow when you're referring to another human being. Call them by their nationality. But the Lord said our children was going to go into captivity. Who more than the so-called Negro? He said, the stranger, that's the non-Hebrew, the non-Jew, the non-Israelite. It don't matter if they from Iranian, Pakistan, um, Africa, uh, if they're from Europe, they are strangers. Because again, just like we read earlier, God made his covenant with a group of Shemites. Abram's descendants, Abraham's descendants. Abraham had Isaac, Isaac had Jacob, Jacob had 12 sons. 
Jacob's name was changed to Israel, 12 sons of Israel, 12 tribes. They began to multiply this great nation. The nation became known as the children of Israel. The Lord said the stranger that's within you, meaning that lives amongst you, they're going to get up very high above you and you're going to come down very low. So when you consider now, look, because you'll have some Gentiles say, yeah, but what about Eminem and 8 Mile? What about the white people that live in the hood too? The ghettos all over the world, brothers and sisters, were not made for the Gentiles. They were made for the children of Israel to keep us in slavery. It's the slums. It's our slums. The strangers, they have a better chance at being successful in anything than we do. That's how come if you go outside into your local neighborhood, that's why you'll see check cash in places, banks, um, grocery stores. Well, the grocery store is kind of neutral, but check cash in place, hair stores, um, banks, uh, you'll have these types of things where the children of Israel live. Liquor stores, Sunday synagogues, Sunday churches. Praise the Lord, Sister Nicole. Happy Sabbath. Why? Because the Lord said the stranger going to get up above you very high and you're going to come down very low. So we don't own businesses as as it relates to how many businesses the stranger owns. The children of Israel don't own businesses like that. And the ones who do own businesses, they don't really own them. The stranger owns them. They might just put the Israelite there just for face value. The Lord says, he shall lend to thee and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head and thou shalt be the tail. We're at the bottom, the children of Israel, at the bottom. Everybody else doing much better than we are. As a people, I'm talking about. You'll have some scragglers, people that's, you know, from these other nations who are doing poor. But overall, we're talking about overall. Verse 45, moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed, not physically destroyed, like erased off the face of the planet, but destroyed mentally and spiritually. As a people, we are destroyed. No unity, no understanding, no knowledge. Far back we can go to tell you about our history is Harriet Tubman. The majority of our people. Praise the Lord, uh, Michael. Um, happy Sabbath. We can't tell you beyond that because why? Because we have no knowledge. So we've, we're, we're destroyed as a people. The Gentiles can tell you centuries and millennia back about their ancestors. But not Israel, not the majority. The Lord said, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. That's why we in trouble. Because we have not been keeping his commandments as a nation. Our forefathers refused to keep his commandments. And the Lord promised that all this that we read in Deuteronomy 28, he promised that all this was going to happen to their children and their children's children. Until he come and get us back. 46. And they shall be upon thee, meaning you as a nation, for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. That is until the Messiah comes back. Because in his first coming, this hadn't happened yet. Well, I should say all of it hadn't happened yet. But since he went back to the father and sat down at the right hand. The rest of this has been fulfilled. Now, the Lord said it was going to be on us for a sign and for a wonder on the real children of Israel. Not the fake Jews. They are Edomites. But the real Jews, this stuff have happened to. 
for and the Lord said it's going to be on us for a sign and for a wonder. So a sign is something that you see, physically see. A wonder is something that calls you to say, wow. Man, that's that is amazing. That's crazy. That's amazing. Not in a good way. Amazing. Wow. Like I'm astonished. Like. You see what I'm saying? When you're driving down the street, I'll just use America. You driving down the street in a major country, uh, city, you drive long enough, you're going to start seeing Negro boys standing in front of the gas station selling drugs. They standing on the heads of all the corners, the street corners, pants sagging, they flossing, bling blinged up, ain't doing nothing all day, got mean mugs on their face, they selling drugs. The police come shoot one of them, the rest of them start saying, Where's the justice at? Praise the Lord, Brother Matthew. Happy Sabbath. Sign. You see these so called black women, the daughters of Zion, with all this weave and makeup on. It's a sign. Do you see the Gentile women wearing weaves in their hair? I'm talking about on a mass scale, brothers and sisters. I'm not talking about these celebrities in general. I'm talking about on a worldwide scale. Do you see the Gentiles wearing weaves? Twerking in, in, in Facebook live videos. But you try to sit down and reason with them and have an, a, a, a serious conversation. They don't have no conversation for you. It's a sign. It's a wonder. And why? The person, somebody may say, well, why? Why? I don't understand. Why would the Lord do this to you? As a nation, as a people. 47. Deuteronomy 28, 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. The Most High have given his people, the children of Israel, the so-called black people, is one group of us. All black people not the same, just like all white people not the same. The Lord gave us everything. He gave us a good, the most pleasant of all lands on earth. It, the land of Jerusalem, the land of Canaan, is so, so awesome. The Most High said, "When I come back to the earth, that's where I want to. That's where I want to dwell at. I want to stay there." The Lord gave us everything. He delivered up our enemies before our eyes. We didn't even have to lift a finger. Even in the battle with Jehoshaphat, the righteous king of Judah and Israel in that day, the Lord delivered up the enemies and he didn't have to do nothing. Nothing. The Lord increased us. We wandered 40 years before we got into the promised land. Our ancestors did. Their shoes didn't even wax old and their garments didn't, didn't mess up because the Lord preserved us. I mean, come on, man. He gave us everything, everything. Even he gave our ancestors, Israel, is the one who wrote this Bible. They penned the words down. The words are the most high's words, but Israel wrote everything. Beginning with Moses. Think about how rich we are as a people, even though we do not know it. Because we've been told by everybody, except the Most High, that we're nothing. We don't mean nothing. We, we should pick ourselves up by our bootstraps. Then when we try to do it, the Lord don't allow it to succeed. Why? Because he said, no, no man going to save you. That means ourselves, too. We're not going to get ourselves out of the situation in ourselves. It's going to be the Lord that's going to cause us to become successful. And we're not going to be successful in the land that we're in because this is not our homeland. I'm talking about as a nation. I'm not talking about as individuals. The Lord said... All this, these curses going to happen to us because we was not grateful in short. 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies 
Uh oh, he didn't say our friends. So when, when I see Hebrews trying to be best friends with Gentiles, I ain't saying it's a sin. I'm not saying that at all. But when we're trying to be best friends with our enemies, a lot of times they expose themselves. It becomes manifest that they are indeed our enemies and not our friends. When they can, when they can so-called make a joke and put on blackface. When they can so-called make a joke and pretend that they're hanging each other. When they can so-called, um, you know, there's many different ways, beloved, that they mock us. And it's supposed to be taken as comedy, as funny. But it's not funny when you know the seriousness behind God's word and you know what have happened to our people. The Lord said we was going to serve our enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. When they led us to them slave ships, then they put chains around us, around our ancestors. I mean, this is this is facts. This is history. It didn't happen to nobody else, only us. 49, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Our ancestors spoke Hebrew. They didn't speak old English. So when the Gentiles who made a deal with the Hamites and they, they took us on, the, on their slave ships, our ancestors didn't know what they was talking about because they couldn't understand their language. Prophecy being fulfilled. The Lord said a nation of fierce countenance. That means they their, their faces are fierce, like just mean looking. Which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shew favor to the young. They did us in. Okay. Let's skip down to verse... Um, 54 and we'll see why what has fueled this black on black hatred you know so called where Israel hate Israel 54 so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate his eyes shall be evil toward his brother why because of the captivity captivity Ecclesi Ecclesiastes tells us Captivity maketh a wise man mad. You ever seen Boys in the Hood? See? Menace to society. It's showing you. The Lord is showing you. Even through the movies. He's showing you. The curses is on this black people. And what, what are these curses specifically? They're in the Bible. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And toward the wife of his bosom. So not only his eye going to be evil towards his own brother, meaning another Hebrew, he even going to despise his own wife because of the situation, not just off top. Just because of the situation, the stress, being overwhelmed, feeling hopelessness, and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. He's not going to care about his children because he's going to be trying to be, he's going to be out for self, trying to do better for himself. But because of the situation, because of the curse that's on this people, he's going to feel like, Screw everything, man. Why do you think they, they tell us there's no where the black men at in the families? Because, see, these curses have caused a lot of Israelite men to forsake their families. But not always for, you know, it's not always as simple as he just don't care about his family. Consider this. And I'll try to be brief. The brother 
made a bad choice when he first became a legal adult, right? Let's say before he started a family, he was trying to sell drugs because he was trying to make quick money to help his mom pay her bills because his dad died, right? So he's trying to look out for his mom and take care of her, but he's going about it the wrong way. He don't know that he's an Israelite, according to the Bible. He don't know none of that. He do believe in God, as most Israelites do. Even while we're in darkness, we still have faith in God. We just don't know anything. So he goes out, he sells drugs, he gets locked up. He do, he, he, he do either jail time or he gets some probation, whatever. He come out, now he got this on his record because he's an adult. Right. And that's how the Gentiles charge you. They did not re rehabilitate him while they while he was in jail. You just do your punishment. He comes out. Now he starts a family. He's got a little boy or a little girl, whatever. Or he's got some children. His wife. They think they're boyfriend, girlfriend, but they're married. Right. Got the little children. The wife is home staying with the children. She's taking care of everything. And her husband is trying to find work. It's a little difficult. Right. But he's never given up. His wife starts getting in his ear. I need you to get a job. I need you to get a job. She's an Israelite, too, but she don't know. So he's like, all right, all right, I'm trying, you know. Long story short, he keeps on trying, but he's become it's not successful. Right. He's just finding so many roadblocks. So then she's becoming real agitated. You need to get a job. You need to take care of your family. And he's like, leave me alone. Like, I'm trying, you know. So what he does, foolishly, mind you, he goes out, he sells more drugs because that's the only way that he knows how to get fast money. Right. So he goes out, he sells the drugs, he gets locked up again. This time he does five years. I'll say five to ten years. This time, while he's in jail, his wife. Being that she don't have a covering anymore, she her husband's not home, right? Now, the evil angels, praise the Lord, everybody that's just joining, happy Sabbath. His wife is now in a situation where she has to fend for herself and for their children. And so that masculine spirit, that Jezebel spirit, comes over her because she now she starts to hearken unto the voice of the enemy where the enemy is telling her you got to be a black strong independent woman you gotta you can make it on your own you don't need no man she's listening to foul ungodly music like beyonce independent women and she's falling for it now her eye becomes evil towards her husband right and now she goes out and she's this independent woman. Now her husband comes home from jail because he went to jail because he was trying to take care of his family. He comes out and he's like, come on, let's make this work. She's like, nigga, I don't need you. And now his eye becomes evil towards the wife of his youth. And then he starts to despise his children for the sake of his wife, their mother. And this is an ongoing cycle. And then he goes and gets in another relationship and she goes to be in another relationship. Now the children grow up without father and mother being unified. And now the children repeat the cycle. This is the curse that's on the children of Israel. Let's look at verse 56. The tender, we in Deuteronomy 28 and 56. The tender and delicate woman among you which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. This is how some Hebrew women were back in the day. Now, these Hebrew women is a lot of them. I ain't saying all. A lot of our sisters, man, unfortunately, they just trifling. Trifling. And it's no excuse for that. But what I'm saying is, do you see how the curses are a sign and a wonder on this people? You see the messed up behavior, the bad behavior that these people have. That's what pissed God off so much that he allowed all these things to happen to us. Because our ancestors were doing the same thing and we're not doing any different as a nation. The Lord said her eyes shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter and toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet. 
and toward her children which she shall bear, for she shall eat them for one of all things, secretly in the siege and in straightness wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. So if you know the scriptures, you know a lot of times when famine happened, some of our ancestors, they was eating their own children, man. That's in the book. In a famine, people do crazy stuff, man. You know, but nevertheless, you see the sister, she done turned because of the curses. Because of the curses. We almost done with this chapter. Um, let's look, let's skip down to verse um 61. Because remember I told you earlier, there's diseases and sicknesses that afflict God's chosen people, the children of Israel. Um, that are not written in this book. Verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Show me where cancer is written in this book. Show me where HIV and AIDS and gonorrhea, syphilis, herpes. Show me where that is at in this book. You cannot. It's not in the book, but we know it afflicts the children of Israel more than anybody else. I said more than anybody else because I'm acknowledging it happens to other people, but it doesn't happen more to them than it does to my people, to Israel. Let's skip down to verse 64. Praise the Lord, uh, Roberta. Happy Sabbath. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. He didn't say some people. He didn't say you're going to go to Germany for a little bit amongst the Ashkenaz people and then you're going to come back. He said the Lord will scatter thee among all people. From the one end of the earth, because on a circle you have ends. You have four corners on a circle, not on a spinning ball. OK, I just had to throw that in there. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other, and there thou shalt serve other gods. Not because the Most High is saying, I want you to serve other gods. That would be a contradiction to his holy law. He's saying, when you get to these places where I send you, you're going to be worshiping these false gods. They're going to give you Roman Christianity. They're going to give you Islam. They're going to give you Buddhism, Hinduism. All this. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease. It ain't going to be easy for us. <laughs> it's not going to be easy. We ain't going to be sitting back with our feet kicked up making boatloads of money. We're not going to be in rest as a nation. Nobody bothering us. Nobody messing with us. It's not going to be like that for this people, Israel. He said, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. You ever seen that movie Hustle and Flow with Terrence Howard? It's hard out here. Now, he said it's hard out here for a pimp. Look, it's hard out here for Israel. You understand? He said, but the Lord shall give thee there. It don't matter where we at in the world. As Israel. He said he's going to give us a trembling heart. You know what the heart is? That's the mind. A trembling heart. you just constantly in fear. I'm not saying like fear like shaking in your boots. I'm talking fear like, man, I wonder if I step outside today, is they going to shoot me for mistaken identity? We may not verbalize it literally, but we be thinking it in our heart. Believe you me, we be thinking it. Every time we get pulled over, we be thinking, oh, what? Man, I, I got to do extra stuff just to make sure that the Gentiles don't kill me. Because they might they might tell the world. I was I was scared for my life and I thought he was reaching for something, so I, I shot him and killed him. The brother got his daughter and his wife, sit, his wife is driving. He and his daughter in the back seat. The police come. The brother then told him that he's got a license to carry. And he was reaching for his wallet to show the, the, the Gentile officer his ID and the Gentile shot him anyway, killed him.
the brother's standing out, out in front of the, the convenience store selling cigarettes and CDs. The Gentiles come and choke this man out, and he told them repeatedly, I can't breathe. They killed him anyway. The 17-year-old in Chicago, he running away, had no gun on him. He running away because the Gentiles is bothering him. They shoot him 17 times. They killed Mike Brown viciously. They killed Trayvon Martin. And they hold themselves not guilty. We're going to read it. Emmett Till. I mean, the list goes on. The list goes on, man. The Lord said, we're going to have a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Doubtful, man. I don't know, bro. If I yo, if I try to meet you at your house, man, uh, you know. All right, man, I'll be on my way. But the whole time he thinking in his heart, man, they, man, I, I got to be careful, man. I'm going I'm to go this way just in case. Because I don't want the boys to mess with, mess with me, you know. It, we be thinking it. The Lord said, and thou shalt fear day and night and shalt have none assurance of thy life. This don't happen to the Gentiles. The Gentiles ain't walking around fearful for their life, like something evil going to happen to them. But this so-called black people, I said this so-called black people. Yeah, this black people be thinking it every day. Verse 67, in the morning thou shalt say with God it were even. And at even thou shalt say with God it were morning for the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now pause. When the children of Israel, according to the Bible, left physical Egypt the first time, did not they walk to the promised land? The Lord split the Red Sea and they walked through on dry ground. They didn't take a ship. They walked. This Egypt that he's talking about here is representative of the house of bondage, the house of slavery, captivity. The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. I'm going to bring you into slavery again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen, that slave men, and slave women, bond women, and no man shall buy you. Well, we know that we were bought on the auction block because we have proof of that. And we know that this so-called black people did go into slavery, worldwide slavery, by way of slave ships. That definitely did happen. Right. And so what we have here is undeniable proof, undeniable proof that the so-called black people, the so-called African-American Negroes, not just living in America, but all over the world, in every country we are known by proverbs and bywords. In every country that the children of Israel are at or in, they are at the bottom. Every every country that the children of Israel reside right now, their ancestors have told them, as far as you know, our elders have told us, as far back as our history goes, yeah, we come from slaves. Every country where the children of Israel are, we have no assurance of our life. On a day-to-day -day basis. Every country where the children of Israel are, we experience the curses of this Bible. Because the Lord have put these curses on us as a nation because of our ancestors' continual disobedience and forsaking of his law. And then we turn around and we build a Sunday synagogue and we say, let's pray to, to the God of heaven but Proverbs 28 and 9 tells us that he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. So how can we pray to the God of heaven, whom we say we believe, 
in, but we we refuse to do his laws. We refuse to keep his commandments. God is not listening to that. I would read Leviticus 26, but you read that on your own time. That's another passage testifying to who we are as a people. Let's go to Psalm 83 real quick. And we I'm just going to do a few more and then I'll end this video. Like I said, today I didn't want to do a lesson as far as how I normally do it. Just writing something out, writing some scriptures out. I wanted to have an open discussion, but um, nevertheless, the, the topic is still the same, the children of Israel. Psalm 83, keep not thou, thou silence, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. The nations that hate God, they have, they're proud, they're arrogant, they boast. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Who is the Lord's people? Who is his inheritance? Jacob, the children of Israel. And consulted against thy hidden ones. Why are the children of Israel referred to as the hidden ones? Because majority of the world will not acknowledge who we really are, even though many of them know who we are. But at all costs, because of financial reasons, they refuse to let it out in the open. Little do they know it's not up to them what's manifest and what's hidden. It's up to God. That's why this black people all of a sudden, after all this time, all these black people all over the world are waking up remembering who they are according to this book we're reading the scriptures not you've never you've never come across this none of us that have been alive have come across so many black people that talk about the book of deuteronomy the 28th chapter let alone how to spell it you haven't met so many black people that know about the book of deuteronomy in your lifetime never but that's because of the sovereignty of the Most High God of Israel. God said in the last days he was going to wake his people up. He put a spirit of slumber upon his people. And then he shipped us all over the world, using the Gentiles to do it, using our enemies. I'm not saying every Gentile is an enemy, because even some of the other people from the other nations can be saved right along with us. All 12 tribes, the remnant from every tribe is going to be saved. All Israel is not Israel. But nevertheless, the Lord put that spirit of slumber upon us and sent us all over the world into captivity for punishment's sake, for refusing to obey his commandments. But the Lord said, in the latter days, I'm going to wake you up. I'm going to remove that spirit of slumber and you're going to know who you are again. And the remnant of you who who hate your sin, you're going to you're going to forsake your sins and everything else pertaining to it. And you're going to follow me. And that's what's happening, brothers and sisters. I look at my, a lot of my brothers and sisters and they love sin so much, they refuse to stop sinning against the Lord. Even though many of them know that we are the children of Israel. But there's a remnant that love God and fear him and love his commandments. Those are the ones that will be saved. And the people from the other nations who acknowledge God's chosen people which is this so-called black people, according to the Bible and historical evidence. They too will be saved. But we are hit. We are the hidden ones because majority of the world is not looking at us as God's chosen people. They think that the Edomites, the fake Jews, they think that they are God's chosen people. And they are not. That is our brother Esau. Stolen identity. That's in the book too. Verse four, Psalm 83, verse four, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. What is nation? Nationality. Why do you think every few decades they change the identity of the so-called black man and black woman? They call us black. They call us Negro, 
African American, colored. Why do you think that is? They don't do it with anybody else, but only us. Why? Because we are the people of this book. That's why. They keep trying to throw us off the trail. Deceiving us. You guys aren't the children of Israel. Y'all are black. Y'all are Negro. Y'all are the African Americans. That is not nationality. Those are colors and countries. Africa and, and America were named after Gentiles because the Gentiles, they've been running the world for quite some time now. But before them, we ruled the world. And before us, Ham ruled the world. So that's no big deal. But nevertheless, they have said, these other nations, these other race groups have said, let us cut Israel off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. In remembrance. Why do you think the fake Jews, they don't call themselves Israelites, they call themselves Israelis? Why do you think the, the Edomites, who are the fake Jews, they call themselves Jewish and not Jews? Because that's not who they are. That's who we are. We are we're not Jewish. We are the real Jews. Even the whole nation. Hitler knew this. Hitler knew that we was the real Israelites of this Bible. Let's keep reading. Verse 5. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom. That's the fake Jews. They at the top of the list. The Ishmaelites. That's the so-called Arabs, because the Arab slave trade, tra the Arab slave trade happened before the Gentile slave trade, the transatlantic trade slave or slave trade. It was Ishmael who who was taken captive some Israelites first, and then the Gentiles came shortly after of Moab and the Hagarenes, Gabal and Ammon, and um. um uh, Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Go sit down. Go sit down. Go sit down. Assur also is joined with them. They have hoping the children of Lot Salah. All these nations. These are Gentiles, Shemites, and Hamites. All, mo a lot of these other nations have done us in. They have conspired against us. This is the greatest conspiracy in human history is to cut God's people off from even remembering who they are. That takes some boldness, brothers and sisters. It's, it's almost like they're telling God, yeah, we're going to we're going to do your people in. Because we know that they've been cursed. We know that they punished. For forsaking your laws. So we're going to keep it going. Let's read Zechariah. Let's go to Zechariah real quick. Zechariah chapter 1. Zechariah chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 15. And I am very sore displeased with the heathen. The heathen represents the other nations. With the heathen that are pleased, I mean, with the heathen that are at ease, for I was but a little displeased and they helped for the affliction. The other nations have done us in and furthermore, they are they are deadlocked and trying to keep us from remembering who we are, even though they're not they're not going to be successful at that because the most high won't let them. But they sure are trying. And the Lord says, I'm. I'm sore displeased. I'm upset because I was a little displeased with my people and I gave them into the hands of their enemies so that they could be punished. But I never intended for the heathen to tell my people that they are not my people anymore. You look back in history in the Bible, all the captivities that we was under before this last one, the nations who had us in slavery never told us that who that we were not okay. God's chosen people, that we were not the children of Israel. Not once. It's only this last captivity 
where we've been brainwashed to believe that we're not the children of Israel anymore. That's very damaging. And the Lord says, I was a little displeased with my people. But the nations, they helped forward the affliction. Because why? Because by them telling us that we're not the real Jews, that, that we are outcasts, that we, we don't have a, a history, we have gone off into all this false God worship trying to find ourselves. When our history, our, our true identity is in this Bible. And the nations are persuading us day by day through commercials, entertainment, music to keep on sinning. They even use other Israelites to help push that. Keep sinning, keep sinning, keep sinning. Sin separates us from our God. chocolate yeah the lord deals with everybody for their sins but he deals with israel more swiftly that means more quickly than anybody else nobody else gets punished for their sins faster than we do because why we're god's children literally i'm talking we're his wife that's book so when we sin the lord cracked down on us fast Let's go and see that real quick. Let's go to Amos chapter 3. And then we'll hit Isaiah real quick. So why are we, why is this black people suffering like this? Because our ancestors refused to keep God's commandments and therefore God have been punishing us for it. He says that he visits the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate him. Amos 3 and 1, hear this word that the Lord have spoken against you, O children of Israel. That's you, Negro. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth, because he made a covenant with us and nobody else. The other nations can be saved, but they have to cling to him that is a Jew. They must learn of salvation from the priests. Who are the priests? Israel. He says, therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Why? Because when we sin, being that we are in a blood covenant with the Most High, go back and read Exodus. We're in a blood covenant. So when we sin against God, when we break his laws, God don't waste no time chastising us. That's how come a white man can steal, he can steal money. And get a light sentence. A Hebrew who's trying to feed his family can steal a loaf of bread and get double life. Who do you think is doing it to us? The Most High is allowing the Gentiles to do it. The Gentiles taking things to the extreme. But nevertheless, it's the Lord showing us, look, you my people. So when you mess up, because to whom much is given, much is required, brothers and sisters. When you mess up, I'm going to get you harsh. Because you know better. I'm going to get to the Gentiles later. But you, being my people, you know better. Let's go to Isaiah. Um, Isaiah chapter 1. And verse 2. Isaiah 1 and verse 2. It says, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. So the Lord is talking to everybody. And he says, for the Lord have spoken, I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib, the ass referring to the donkey. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. You talk to the average Hebrew, and you say, what's your, uh, what's your nationality, brother or sister? Oh, I'm African American. Oh, really? Can you prove that? Well, I mean, no, but that's what I was taught. You know, we all believe that. No, nah, we all don't believe that. And what you was taught don't mean that who taught you was right. You tell the average black person, you know we're not black, right? You know we're the children of Israel. They don't, they do not care, brothers and sisters. Majority of them, they don't care. 
You tell them, you know, our history is found in the Bible. Yeah, I don't believe in that. The average Israelite thinks this way, brothers and sisters. They don't. The Lord said we don't even consider. They they too worried about getting the next LeBron shoes or Michael Jordan shoes. They too worried about going to the next sports event. They too worried about fornicating. Did you hear what I said? Going to the Muslim mosques, thinking that their identity is found in that nonsense, false god worship. When I'm dark, Our people, Israel, they run all over the place, worshiping all these strange false gods, trying to find their true identity. And the one place that they don't look, they don't even consider to look, is in the pages of the Holy Bible. Now. I tell you the truth. I tell you why that is. Because they know if they start dealing with God's word, God going to reprove them and rebuke them for their sins. And they, a lot of these Hebrews love their sins. That's why they will not come and deal with the Bible. And if they do deal with the Bible, they cherry pick and they twist it. This is my people. This is the children of Israel. Let's keep reading. We in Isaiah 1 and verse 4. A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity. Iniquity is sin. A seed of evildoers, children that are corrupt, corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. How do you forsake the Lord? You stop dealing with his, his word. You don't keep his commandments. You can believe in Jesus all you want. But if you don't, if you believe in Jesus, but you don't keep his commandments, what profit is there to you? They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. That's why we're being, that's why this black people is being punished, brothers and sisters. Because we have pissed God off. The destruction that you see happening to the black people all over the world, the Negro, that is God showing how angry he is with his wife, with his people, his children. They are gone away backward. Backsliders. It's like we be knowing the right thing to do, but we just keep on doing evil. Then the Lord sent his prophets, other Hebrews to us, and they be telling us, thus save the Lord, thus save the Lord. And we just be ignoring them. I don't believe that. I don't, I don't subscribe to that, brother. They be saying things. I worship Allah. That's what they'll tell you. That was Malcolm X's biggest downfall. It wasn't that people was coming after him, trying to kill him, and eventually did get to him. It was, He died because he was worshiping that false god, that stone, the black Saturn cube of Mecca. Malcolm X was an Israelite. The Lord said, we don't even consider the Lord said that the ox knows his master and the donkey knows where his master lives. My people don't even consider. The Ishmaelites and the Edomites fighting over our, our homeland, we picking a side. Instead of realizing, wait a minute, that's our land. It don't belong to neither one of y'all. This how dumbed down Israel have become over the centuries, man, and millennia. The Lord said, why should ye be stricken anymore? Why do I got to keep whooping your head, Israel? We marching in the streets. Black power. No justice, no peace. Justice for Trayvon Martin. Justice for Mike Brown. Justice for Tamir Rice. Justice for all these deceased Hebrews, right? The Lord said, why should you be stricken anymore? Get in your chair. We asking our enemies to stop beating us up. And it's like the Lord got that angel, God in their hand to brutally assault us. The nations are like, we want to stop being mean to y'all. We want to stop doing these things to y'all. I'm talking about some of them. The ones at the top, they love doing this to us, keeping us at the bottom, doing evil to us. Exactly, Michael. Faith without works is dead faith. That's right. The Lord will not let the Gentiles ease up 
on beating us up because Israel is a hard-headed people. We are stiff-necked and rebellious as a nation. Individual, that's different. As a nation, as a people group, hard-headed. The Lord said, you will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. We've been beat up, done in, all of this. Why? Because we refuse to keep God's laws. And who is all this talking about? This so-called black people, the Negro, male and female. Let's go to Isaiah 3. Let's go to Isaiah 3. We got we got so many false prophets in our within our nation. Creflo Dollar, T.D. Jakes, uh, Eddie Long before he, before the Lord dealt with him. The list goes on, man. Many false prophets, but it's nothing new. We had false prophets back in the old days. Just read the scriptures. And the main conversation of the false prophet is, let me give you 10 reasons why you don't have to keep God's law, why it's been done away with. And because Israel loves to hear lies like that, Israel, that's why Israel flocked to teachings like that. Why? Because the problem is not this people just don't want to do right. The problem is this people just don't want to obey God's commandments. Because God's commandments means that you're not feeding your flesh. And feeding the flesh is that carnal, wicked mindset that, that the saints struggle with, but the sinner freely lives in. A lot of Israelites don't want to serve God because God calls for holiness and righteousness. Then you will have peace. Let's look at chapter 3, Isaiah 3 and verse 16. The Lord says, moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion, that's the, the, the Negro women, are haughty, that's proud, arrogant boastful and walk with stretched forth necks you know what that looks like when they be sassing you shaking their head and like and then and, 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 and. and wanton eyes oh girl i'm about to get with that guy because he got a lot of money do you girl wanton eyes covetousness Walking and mincing 